Hi guys. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the frequently asked uh, interview questions related to uh, routing protocol OSPF. Mostly, uh, if you see in YouTube, uh, there are lots of uh, videos about OSPF entry questions related to these OSPF error types, LSA types, and neighborship states. So I'm not going to discuss about that. I'm going to discuss about some of the uh, questions asked in real time uh, related to you know uh, some scenario based uh, OSPF entry questions, like uh, connecting four OSPF routers into a same L2 switch in the same broadcast domain, whether OSPF is a TCP or UDP protocol, and why OSPF stacks in extra state, and uh, another scenario based questions like in a typical area. Uh, what kind of LSA types can be present? It's uh, default uh, priorities, various vendors, and uh, mostly you will see uh, questions asked like why you need area zero in OSPF. Let's see uh, a scenario questions like we have four routers connected to same L2 switch, which is the same uh, broadcast domain. Uh, the questions will be like what will be the neighborship state um, on each of this router when you give show IP OSPF neighbor? In, a, in this scenario, um, there will be one router that will be selected as a, a DR, a designated router, and a backup designated BDR. The other two routers connected in the switch, which is in the same broadcast domain, um, will be shown as DR others between them. It means if you give show IP OSF neighbor from R4, which is router 4, which is a DR other, uh, it will show the full neighborship with uh, the de designated router, which is DR, and uh, with uh, R2, which is a backup designated router. With R3, it will show us a two way DR other. So you can see this output from R4. If you give show IP OSF neighbor, you can see on with router 1 and 2, it is having full neighborship, that is with your DR and BDR. But with uh, router 3, it is stuck in two-way state and uh, because it is a DR other. So why uh, we have this, uh, um, you know, uh, behavior, you know, um, the question can be asked like why there are uh, two routers showing DR others. Uh, so in OSPF, once you form a full uh, neighborship with uh, uh, any router, your neighbor router, you have to um, update your, um, you know, uh, link state update to uh, those routers. You have to sync your, um, uh, you know, uh, link state database uh, with that neighbor. Let's say if you have full licensing between all four routers, all four routers will be keep on exchanging this uh, link state advertisement, uh, you know, link state database with them. So that is unnecessary information. So there is a reason in a broadcast domain we will have one router uh, selected as a designated router. The DR will send those uh, link state updates to all the other uh, routers in this, you know, uh, OSPF domain. So that's why uh, the DR other routers will form full licensee only with DR and BDR. So that uh, it ex DR will send all the link state updates to these uh, DR other routers. And sometimes uh, the question can come like uh, you have a state called a two-way, uh, you know, uh, whether it is uh, expected or the neighborship is not forming because of any issue, something like that. The two-way state here is expected because with other DR routers, uh, DR other routers, the neighborship will not form. As long as you have a full licensee with your DR and BDR, you will get all the uh, information that you need for routing. So similarly, if I give uh, from R1, which is my DR, uh, if I give show IP OSPF neighbor, that is from R1, I give and show IP OSP neighbor, you can see the full adjacency with all the other routers, that is with router 2, 3, and 4. And you can see here, uh, three, uh, 2 is your BDR, and 3 and 4 is actually DR others. And uh, the next question I was talking about uh, whether OSPF is a TCP or UDP protocol. This is something uh, asked uh, to you know check um, the candidates' knowledge about OSPF and its uh, you know uh, protocol field. Sometimes uh, they might deceive you to you know um, answer whether uh, 
um, you know, you are you're thinking OSP was a TCP or UDP. You know, sometimes people mistake saying that it is a UDP uh, protocol, something like that. But unlike other routing protocol, OSPF does not carry data via a transfer protocol such as uh, UDP or TCP. OSPF uh, forms, you know, uh, IP datagrams directly, you know, packing them using protocol number 89. So OSPF itself an IP protocol with eight, uh, protocol field 89. So it's not TCP or it's not UDP. Now, um, another scenario based question can be asked like a router inside an ordinary area, which is not a stub area or a totally stub area or a NSSA, an ordinary area, what type of LSA can present inside this uh, uh, particular uh, area? So in a normal area, you can expect a LSA type 1, type 2, type 3, or even a LSA, let's say in R1, which is inside the ordinary area, if there is any routes redistributed, it will be coming as an extended LSA. Uh, similarly, if you see R3, which is in the stub area, it can have only type 1, type 2, type 3 LSA. It cannot have Western LSA. So basically, this is to, uh, uh, you know, try to check whether the candidate have the knowledge about um, uh, in an area, uh, what kind of, um, you know, um, LSA types the router can have. So another question, um, even in real time, um, many engineers might have seen uh, ways you have stuck in extra state so this question is basically understand uh, you know uh, whether can you able to troubleshoot when ospf gets stuck in extra so basically you need to understand what is this state actually in ospf so in this state the dr bdr election happens and uh, uh, dbd packets exchange between the neighbors at this stage the database uh, descriptor packets so this is the state the mtu check happens actually so mtu check happens in this state if there is a mtu mismatch the OSPF neighborship will stuck in X dot. So the important point to note is the MTU check. If there is a MTU mismatch between the two neighbors, the OSPF neighborship will stuck in X dot during exchanging these DBD packets. And again, uh, any protocol uh, like BGP or uh, RIP or OSPF, uh, ISIS, you should know about its uh, priorities and uh, AD values. So, so OSPF default priority in Cisco is one, in Juniper it is 128. So any uh, router that you connect in your network with the higher priority will take the DR uh, role. So we need to be aware about uh, what is the default priority and uh, based on the topology and recommend we need to change that. So we need to aware about these priority values. And uh, OSPF AD value 110. These are very basics basically, but uh, sometime in the interview we miss this. So we have to be aware about uh, these values. And again, the hello timers, the default is 10 seconds. The whole timer is 40 seconds. And next question, um, you will see this um, question definitely in most of the interview related to OSPF, like why we need area zero in OSPF. And can we have, uh, you know, um, four routers in a area five without area zero connecting to it? So yeah, basically area zero is responsible, you know, distributing routing information between the knockbone bone areas. That is between the areas, if you want to exchange routing information, it is done by the area zero. That's why it's called a transit area. So the inter area routing happens via the routers connected to backbone area and their own associated areas. The important point uh, of having area zero is to avoid loops. That is, uh, if you have two areas like area four and area five, if you want to exchange between routes between them, you need a, a, a router in area zero. If there is no area zero, it will not forward the packet. The ABR will not forward the packet to avoid the loops actually. So to uh, for the second one, like can we have four routers in an area five without area zero? Let's say you see area five here with four routers, one router that is connected to area six also here. So if you have four routers in area five, as long as you are routing between them, uh, it will work fine, but only when you want to, you know, exchange routing between these area six and five, it will not work unless until this R1, which is connecting between area five and six, have a interface that is in part of area zero. So four routers can run OSPF in area five without area zero, but they cannot do inter area routing uh, with any area like area six, because by rule, if ABR, 
doesn't have a single interface in area 0, the interior routing will not work. So basically, this rule is there to avoid the routing loops. So if you have area 5 and 6, both we can work independently. But if you want to exchange routes between them, this R1 should have one interface at least in area 0. So I think we covered all the questions which I placed in this particular video. So these are the six uh, questions uh, I covered in this uh, particular video. Um, the rest of the questions I will cover in a different video. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure uh, you subscribe to this channel so that when I upload new videos uh, with the part two with the rest of the questions, you will get an alert.